What's up, YouTube? Cornell here with you. Um, we're doing another rollerblade review. Possibly one of my favorite rollerblades that I've tried. This is the new Rollerblade Blink SK review. The SK stands for Sean Keen, and the Blink part is kind of Rollerblade's uh, like aggressive uh, freestyle line. So, um, super awesome boot. I think uh, we'll start at the bottom and just work our way up. Um, just real quick, uh, this is a beta like testing. So they released a certain amount of these. They're letting a bunch of people do reviews. And then I think later this summer, they're gonna come out with like a full line with full size ranges. Cause right now they only come in like size and a half ranges. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So let's start at the bottom. The wheels, um, out of all the wheels I've skated so far, these are the best wheels ever. They're the Rollerblade Nitrogen wheels, 60 millimeter. 92a hardness i believe um and they came with i don't know what kind of bearings they are but they're really good they're really fast i think they're abec nines um so to come stock on a skate with abec nine bearings is nice i wish all skate companies would just put good bearings in because my rossi's m12s and also my usd aeons the bearings that came in them the Aeons are, I guess, are aftermarket bearings. There's like ABEC 5 Wicked bearings, but I think they're trash. I don't know. Sorry, Wicked. I don't wasn't impressed with those. But anyways, these bearings are really good. The wheels are really good. And then I've been skating. These are obviously not the frames that came with it. The frames that came with it um, are great frames if you like skating anti-rocker. And I've been trying to learn how to skate flat. So I had to switch them off. And the other thing, even if you do skate them anti-rocker, these particular ones that came on the boot are really long. These are 290 millimeters. And most other large frames, like these are the large uh, Kaiser Fluid 5 frames. And these are 270 millimeters and these are 290. So they're just really long. So even when I wasn't skating them flat, they felt kind of train tracky. And definitely skating them anti-rocker is like super train tracky. So I swapped those out. Didn't really care for how they rode. Um, for skating flat, the Kaiser 5s, the Fluid 5s, super good. So shout out to USD because that's a good flat frame. Um, but yeah, one thing I did notice is the plastic on the USD frame is a little bit slower than the plastic sliding wise than the plastic on the blank frame. So that's something that might be mentionable. So now that brings us up to the sole plate. Um, super awesome sole plate. Uh, sole tricks were super easy. Sole grinds. Um, negative stuff still kind of hard. It is wider than most. Definitely wider than like my Rossi's M12s. Um, not quite as wide as my USD A on negative side, but still good. Could, I was, I've been learning stalls and negatives. I haven't really slid a whole lot of stuff negative yet. One thing, I get why it's there, but if you look, um, it kind of rockers on the sole plate. And I kind of get why you can do that. So you can kind of like move like this while you're on the sole grind or when you're on the, yeah, like the sole plate grind. Um, I guess it gives you a little bit more mobility and it makes sense that it could slide a little faster, reduces a little bit of like surface area on the sole plate itself, but it also makes it feel like a little looser, a little harder to lock in. I found on a more, again, I'm kind of a beginner. So on a more like perfectly flat sole plate, I found that it's a little easier to lock in. So there is that. One of the cool things about the sole plate, um, and it's something that only rollerblades been doing, um, is the frame itself, I don't know if you can see, the frame itself is not attached to the sole plate. So normally you have the boot and then it attaches to the sole plate and then the frame attaches to the sole plate on the other side. And what they did with this to get like a lower center of gravity, they just cut an entire hole through the sole plate and mounted the frame directly to the boot. And so that's awesome because it lowers your center of gravity. So things like top sides and stuff are theoretically easier and uh, it also lessens a little bit of weight because you have less plastic and um, it feels really good. However, the one thing, and I'm really proud I found this, 
for the noob reviews because I don't think anyone else has mentioned this on the rollerblade blank skate. The plastic of the boot that the frame is mounted to is significantly softer than the like sole plate. So what I've found, and it's my, one of my biggest gripes is, I don't know if you can see this, but it creates give in the frame. So the frame can wiggle side to side. And that's, like, and I've tightened the heck out of these things. They're as tight as they can get. And that's because the frame is connected to the boot, not the sole plate. And the boot is made out of a much softer plastic than the sole plate. So that's kind of, I mean, it's not a big deal. You can't feel it too much, but you can definitely feel like there's a little more flex. And I definitely think you lose a little bit of like energy efficiency. So it cuts down on your speed a little bit. Another thing I want to gripe about just frame wise and boot wise is, and it's not particular to this boot, but the UFS system where they've calculated to screw the holes to mount to the boot for UFS. I just think it's wrong because like, the screw ends up being like under the wheel. So I think the UFS system, in my opinion, they should calculate like, what's the biggest aggressive wheel? Oh, it's about 65 millimeters. And then they should just put it, the screw to hold the UFS frame should be just outside of 65 millimeters on the frame. I don't like, cause then it gives you like a bigger channel two. And I know that Sean Keen and some of the newer advanced guys will actually do grinds in channel two and channel three but honestly one of the biggest th reasons why the aeon i think is like so popular is because the wheels are right next to each other there's no channel two or channel three space and it gives you a bigger h block so i think the ufs system across the board needs to change get bigger h blocks smaller channel two and channel three but i might save that whole rant for another video okay so now let's go up to the shell of the boot absolutely love the shell of the boot it's good looking the toe box is nice and wide i have a wider foot as i mentioned in my rosie's review and it's also tall so there's nothing pinching down or pinching on the sides it's just nice and roomy if you get the right size for your foot and you have a slightly wider foot it, you're gonna feel secure but like just be comfortable and then that brings us to the laces i did swap out the laces there was nothing wrong with the other ones i just wanted white ones to make the skate pop a little more so i got lace laces from my boy brandon in new zealand shout out blader news um and then that brings us to the 45 degree strap and this 45 degree strap is great i haven't skated a whole lot of skates with 45 degree straps but i know that sometimes that's something people complain about i haven't found any issues just locks you in you don't get any heel lift in this skate which is super good i like that and then that moves us on up to the buckle pretty basic buckle uh it's got some good buckle protection i've noticed on almost every skate the buckle protection is really good towards the outer flange but then like almost near the middle to main part of the buckle mechanism there's not a lot of buckle protection into the shell of the boot which i don't understand i feel like that's just lazy engineering like just put good buckle protection all the way across it like the Rosies has better buckle protection than this. And this has better buckle protection than the, a the Aeon buckle protection is trash. But that'll be in my Aeon review. Anyway, and that brings us to the cuffs. I really like the cuffs. I do like how this part of the cuff, the buckle, um, once you clip it in, the, ex the excess, instead of hanging out and flapping around, the excess goes into the shell and is hidden and out of the way. That is awesome, because that's when, like, again, the Aeon, it's just exposed. It doesn't, like, stay in the shell. So on my Aeons, that's, like, clipping, and, like, it catches on my other skate, and I can't stand it. So huge shout-out to Rollerblade for that. That was a simple and an ingenious way to just keep the strap out of the way on the cuff. Really awesome. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the liner. Oh, real quick before we get into the liner. The one thing about the cuff I don't love is the hardware. I don't know if you can see in there. The hardware, they covered it with like Velcro, but the hardware sticks out on the cuff on the inside. And so what it does is it's been wearing these like, it's just been putting an indention into 
the foam of the liner. It's kind of, I don't know. I feel like Rollerblade, especially out of everyone with their R&D, just make your hardware sit flat. Just bevel it out. Make it, make your shell hold your hardware flat. I don't like that there's metal hardware pushing basically on my ankle bone. You can't quite fill it through the liner, but I don't know. I don't like that in, in concept and theory. I feel like it just puts more wear and tear on the liner than needed. So yeah, uh, I know that this is your first run of this skate, but fix that. Make the hardware lay flat. All right, so before we get into the liner, let's take a look at the inside of the shell. The They have a lot of hill cushion, which is really nice. So the hill cushion just pops out. They have it kind of burrowed out in the shell, in the heel of it, so that even with all this heel cushion, which is nice, makes your heels feel much better when you're jumping off rails and ledges and stuff. So you have tons of heel cushion, but it still sits flat. So it feels nice and kind of normal. You don't have like a huge raised heel, which a lot of other skates like the Aeon or the Rosies, if you, Rosies doesn't even have a heel pad, but if you put a heel pad, it just raises your heel like way, way higher. And I think it's kind of nice to have more of a natural feeling like flat foot. So Rollerblade, that's pretty awesome. They designed something you can have a more natural feeling flat foot with a lot of good heel protection. Um, and that's it for the shell. So that's pretty escape. These liners, for stock liners, this is the best liner you can get in a skate stock. In fact, I like this arguably almost just as much as the Intuition liners. And I might just buy this liners for some of my other skates. It comes with like a really thick, tough footbed, almost like a walkable, it reminds me of like a walkable wakeboard boot liner. Um, but yeah, so it has nice molded plastic, gives it good grip. It's got grip on the heel here, so you don't get heel lift out the back of the skate. And then it has laces. You don't necessarily need laces for this liner. It is a stiffer liner. It's got a nice stiff supportive tongue so you can really lean into it. And yeah, so this liner I think is pretty much the best liner other than maybe Intuition liners. But I'm also not gonna spend $200 on Intuition liners. I'm just not gonna do it. So now let's look at the footbed. And these footbeds are actually really good. They actually have like a plastic arch support. And I was lucky enough that the amount of arch support is almost perfect for my foot. Fits pretty good. So yeah, the arch support on this is amazing. Definitely recommend that. And then another thing, I don't know if they're gonna do this on all their new makes, but for the beta test, they kind of had to do all the sizes and like size and a half sizes. So this was like the sizing pad. So if you are a 10 and a half, you just take that out. You have a little more space and then it's a 10 and a half boot. I'm more of a size 10 or even sometimes a nine and a half depending on the skate. So I definitely put that in there, took up some extra space, um, made me feel a little more secure in there. So there's that, that's the sizing board. And all right, so let's talk about who this skate is for. I don't think this skate is for um, someone who's been doing it a while and wants to get really good. And especially if you support Sean Keen or want to skate like him, wouldn't hurt to get his skate. Shout out Sean Keen again. It's really cool that Rollerblade gave you a pro model boot because they quit giving aggressive inline skaters pro model boots for a while. So hopefully that changes and they keep reinvesting into aggressive. Um, yeah, I really liked how this skate skated overall. I learned a lot of tricks on this. The one, other than the other things I already kind of complained about, the one thing that just really, I feel like is gonna turn a lot of people off of this skate is the weight. It's so heavy. It's like, I know the Aeons are like the lightest skate, but it's like double the weight of my Aeons, which is pretty crazy. I think you could remove Rollerblade. I think you could remove some of the metal. Um, Use just a little bit less like actual metal hardware in the boot and make it a little lighter. Maybe change some of the double thickness and plastic in certain areas that you don't need it. But yeah, I don't know. Overall, great skate. I love it. It's actually probably my favorite skate of all the ones I have, but it is just a little bit heavy 
and so that's my main gripe is that it's heavy and then I don't love how the frame seems to wiggle back and forth because it's mounted to the softer plastic of the boot. Um, so I think that's something they could adjust if they could adjust just certain areas of the boot with harder plastic so that when the frame mounts to it, it's a stiffer feel. Um, but yeah, so that is the new 2022 Rollerblade Blank Sean Keen. Um, let me know, how did I do guys? Did I nail it? Did I miss some things? Um, do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation about it. I'd love to um, get more interactions with the Rollerblade community specifically. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thoughts like things and the clock tower's gone.